Welcome back to another video guys. More all for one craziness. And in this match we're going to find out if Karishima really is the hardest man in the room. Let's find out together. Sounds very strange when you put it that way. But hey, sometimes that's the way that it's got to be. So we kick the game off here. I'm with uh, these two guys here. Mount Lady and Ida. Pretty good combination there. Not really one you would complain about if you saw those two on your team. And straight off the bat, we've got a Kiri coming for us. These days, when I have a floaty jumper, which sounds like a code name for like a weird number two you took <laughs> or something. When I have a floaty jumper, I feel as if a lot of Krishmas can't actually hit me unless they catch me by surprise. Like I can just kind of get around a lot of their stuff. Um, like you're seeing me do it right now. Not to say every single Karishma that ever plays the game can't hit me, but I just have a good knack for uh, getting out of the way of a lot of things. But then, as you can see, my uh, my luck ran out as a third party Bakugo came out of nowhere, stopping me from finishing off these two, the Bakugo and the Karishma, and then a Froppy came in for a, you know, a save. Right at the last part, I got lucky there, but I got unlucky when a third party Bakugo kind of came after me in like the worst possible moment, so I think that was the universe just correcting itself. So yeah, we had a very explosive start as you can see. That 1v2 was looking good for us until uh, another one from another team came and ruined everything, but we managed to get back in there. Look at that, never count out all for one. Someone as horrible as this guy never wants to go down easy. And obviously I'm pushing my luck here. I'm right in the fire with such a low health. You know, I always feel like uh, like nothing can stop me. Look, I'm just literally one hit away, but they just either don't know or they're just like that down low themselves. So I was really, I was really pushing my luck there. And then the Mount Lady finished off Endeavor for me. But unfortunately, all of my other victims got away. Like, that could have easily been like three or four KOs if timings were just a bit different, but they weren't. Sometimes when I use the Gamma, I like to go uh, into the trees. Because when you go into the trees with the Gamma, obviously you can still be hit, but it kind of just takes people's sight of you away. So they don't actually know where you are, or they can't quite pinpoint you because you are somewhere in the trees rather than, hey, I'm out here in the open. Like Freezer sitting in his little chair, you know, that <laughs> that levitates around. You can just easily make out it's him in, in, in the open. But when you're in the trees, you know, you could be to the left of the trees, the right, in the middle. They kind of have to take that guess. And as you can see, this fight did not let up one bit. It was going the whole way. And I was thinking this whole time, I'm thinking, you know, this Eater's going to go and help out. But look, he's just standing there watching from the building like uh, some sort of voyeur, just watching it happen. So I was super annoyed with my Eater there because uh, my good buddy, the Mount Lady, she went down from a takedown because he was just standing there, chilling out. And then you got this Kiri still after me, he's like, what, what don't you understand? I don't get hit by you guys. And then he said, you sure about that? Because <laughs> he came around the corner with that stupid alpha. And because of that alpha, because of his interruption, I was brought down to my hands and knees. Out in the zone. But... Was it the end of the game or was it just a blessing in disguise to go down the way I did? Because the way I went down by the zone, heavily unfortunate as it was, it didn't let the Kiri know that I was down so he didn't know to come back around here. So here I'm laying there like, oh you boys just wait until I get back up. You're gonna be in so much trouble. Plotting. 
All for one. You shouldn't be leaving him like this. Letting him fester up all of that rage. So here we are. A freed man. Freed from the clutches of death. Looking to get violent vengeance on those who wronged us in the beginning. I could have maybe made a play for the Eaters card, but he annoyed me. He annoyed me with what he chose to do. And when people do annoying things, the best way to try to tell them to never do it again is to make them pay for their actions. Show them that there are consequences for stupidity. And so that's, that's what I did. So maybe the next time he hides in a building watching as his buddy three feet away is getting a takedown done on them, maybe he won't uh, stand still next time. So we opted to leave the Edo, so we don't need him. But the Mount Lady, we got the uh, we got the card there, so we're still hoping to get the Mount Lady back later on. So at this point, there's no big chest on the ground. So my line of thinking is, okay, if I can't go grab a big chest for a res card, I'm just going to have to power bomb somebody and take uh, take it off their corpse. So that was the plan. And as soon as I get into the action, I'm already getting lit up by some decay, unfortunately. So I had to take a small detour. But we get back to where we need to go. My good friend All Might. And then I run into the Powerpuff Girls over here. These three guys, I'm like, let me just get this takedown. <laughs> and then boom, the three of them show up out of nowhere. Tossing and turning with their special moves like they got something to prove. I'm trying to put me in one of their montages. No way. And then the Froppy's back as well. It does not let up. So now I see this Kiri, I'm like, alright, I'm going to get you. Which is funny, because if you look at him, he had a body warmer on. And when I pulled this Kiri in, I thought I pulled his clothes off. But it was just the one from before. Good to see you again, my friend. <laughs> Good to see you again. So me and that Kiri, we got our closure. We got our closure. And now you're about to see the Kiri finesse. And again, I barely play Kiri, but there's just something in my body that allows me to do work with him every time I get him. Like I said, I can't even remember the, <laughs> the last time I played as Kiri. If you look at this punch on the end of it, it's so funny because he turned the, he turns around right as it's about to hit him. Watch. He's like, oh, <laughs> and then bang. It's like Doki was like, <laughs> and he turned around like, oh. And then as he turned around, smash, that was it. Right on the money. I was kind of ready to go all for broke here. Wanted to finish this guy, but I made a mistake. I pressed L1 when I thought I was in the air, so I did that stationary ground and pound, and it made me take a bunch of damage that I probably shouldn't have taken. And then everyone started getting in on the action, they're like, quick! He's hard! Get him! You know, and then had to get out of there. You know, God bless that Kiri for the level 9 beta. I would have been, would have been a bit happier with the level 4 Gamma if he could have done it, but yeah, can't have everything, I guess. So that Deku got back up to his, uh, to his feet, but I'm looking to change that immediately. Good to see you again, Deku. And this Endeavor from earlier, I think, was the one that I took down and he came back. Boom, he tries to go for that. Horrible idea. Horrible idea. Now, this is where I do a big brain play because I'm looking at these, these two and I'm like, that Bakugo is going to come back for them because it's two of his teammates. So I didn't take them down intentionally straight away. I waited for him to show up and then I got a free hit on him. And another big brain play here. Bakugo cannot go anywhere. He can't go up because he's underneath the ceiling. He can't go backwards because it's the zone. Most players aren't going to want to go back into the zone. So all he can do is go forward. That way, when I use the Gamma, I know that he can't get out of the range of it because he can't go up to escape it, and he's not going to get far enough to be out of the range. So this is what I do to him. It's all about anticipating their reactions from your actions. Spiteful. Absolutely spiteful. And this Darby caught sight of that. He was like, oh god, we don't like that. We don't want this guy in the game. So he tried to get me out there, but thankfully again, those betas came in uh, very, very handy. 
very very handy for the mobility and a quick quick refresh I believe before we get back to landing out the blows Kiri style hopefully you guys have been enjoying it so far as you can see I'm not too shabby when it comes to using good old Karishima's moveset again I don't ever play the guy but I just know how to make uh, a lot of good use out of him Probably because of a game called Rumbleverse, if any of you guys ever played that. Some similar stuff, you know, with the way you use Kiri here. With uh, some of the moves in that game. So, I made a, made a risky decision to go for the box. Because I needed the card to get Mountain Lady back in the game. Who was waiting ever so patiently. So that's what we went for. Look at that, all of these shields but no health. Welcome. And they got all that loot right in front of them there. So they can take some of that. Look at that. Just about got those hits. Like everything in this game was like a matter of just timing. Whether it, you know, you was just right on time. Of getting somewhere. Or you just about did something in the nick of time. So this was kicking off five teams in this small circle. This, this was a good game. This was a good, fun game. And I realized that this little part in here would still be um, be covered by the zone, which is why I ran around the zone and back in here. And I liked it so much. I decided to invite the enemies inside. And I know what some of you are thinking. Set, why didn't you not Tap them with the alpha afterwards, once or two, uh, once or twice, extra bit of damage, sure. But I know for a fact both of these guys would have been spamming their buttons immediately, so I would have been hit probably by Kiri's beta and whatever else that twice had cooking up. So rather than get an extra bit of damage on them, I decided to do the damage that I could do on them and then get out of there scot-free. Because again, people will they'll be mashing that stuff. Yeah, and look, he was right on my tail as well. And I said, if you don't want to stay in there, then you can get the fuck out. <laughs> and then I just threw him back out. Twice's are dangerous, man. You can't let a twice do his thing. You kind of, whenever you see one, especially in Endgame, whenever you see a twice Endgame, you can't let him do what he wants. You, you have to, like, just cut his fun. Seen that Kiri got me wanting to go a bit, Kiri. I'm gonna punch one of you. <laughs> Someone's gonna get it. So you guys know me, I always like to uh I like to get my heels on the go. Even if I'm like more than half I still think I can have more. So we got that all for one out of there. That white suit was not going to protect him. All for one. And then this is where we, uh, we have our showdown with the twice. It's hard because you never know which one's the real one. But you have to take them out anyway. You can't you can't leave a clone because they do a lot of damage. But I've got him cornered here using Kiri's kit. Look at every move I'm making. Quirkwise is just the right one. I'm getting him every time at the right moment. Like if you guys are always uh, missing up your timings, sorry, messing up your timings, you should watch the way I've been using Kiri. In this uh, in this match, and you can see the way how I basically make the most of their resets, when to hit someone, when not to hit someone, all that good stuff right there for you. And then the cleanest finish of all time, right there. How smooth was that? Lovely stuff. So there you have it. Hopefully this game did the crazy thumbnail justice. 
All for one, Karishima style. And back for game two. And in this one, I'm going to tell you guys maybe one or two short but funny stories I had from work uh, at the train station. Normally, um, you know, the stories are either going to be from when I was working at the gym or when I was working at the station because those have been my two main places of work throughout my life. So currently it's the trains. Uh, but this was a few years ago in the train station. It was uh, roughly around about 3 a.m., give or take. And then this guy comes into the station. He comes into the entrance toward the gate line. Now, the gate line is what you essentially call, you know, the place where you go into the station to pay at the gate, you know, the barriers to go through to do whatever you have to do. So he comes in. Fairly normal looking guy. Suitcase. And then he stops, you know, off to the side in the middle of the gate line. And he's on his own. And he's sort of just looking around for a bit. You know, just a, a guy on his own, 3, 4 a.m., just standing there. Don't pay him any attention, though. I thought, he'll, he's going to figure out what he wants to do. And if he needs me, he'll ask me for something. So then out of the corner of my eye, I see him slowly start to take his jacket off. Again, not exactly anything too out of the ordinary. But then he throws it on the floor. He doesn't throw it, he just drops it. Drops it on the floor next to him. And then he starts to lift his jumper off of his body as well. And now he's standing there in his t-shirt. That was a nice double, by the way. Standing there in his t-shirt, holding his jumper, which he then also drops on the floor. So now he's standing there in his t-shirt with his jumper and his jacket on the floor, a train station floor, so that's, you know, gross, next to his suitcase. I think, what's this guy doing? But it didn't end there. Because then he reached for the hem of his t-shirt. And I was thinking, you're not going to take that off as well, are you? I didn't say that. I'm just standing there. Because these types of people, you don't really want to interact with them. Especially at this time. So then he takes it off. And now he's topless, standing in his jeans with his upper clothing on the floor. Belt. I'm thinking, no, you're not. <laughs> I'm thinking, no, you're not unclicks his belt unfastens his jeans pulls his jeans down with his boxers or whatever he's wearing at the same time now he's standing there completely naked save for the jeans and the underwear and the shoes around his ankles and I'm thinking what the hell so obviously I do the only thing uh that you really can do in that situation. I radio, I'm like, I need, I need the British Transport Police. <laughs> you know, the, the police are gonna have to handle this one, you know. I'm not going over there. But again, he just looked like a completely normal dude until he started doing that. He didn't come in looking confused. He didn't come in looking like, you know, he was looking for the wardrobe that led to Narnia. Nothing like that. Oh, this was so annoying at the moment. Look at the way I try to shoot the Endeavor in a second. But the aim assist is so, like, caught up between, like, three different targets in the same, like, very small space. It didn't know, like, where to go. The aim assist, I wanted Endeavor, but the aim assist is like, mm, I don't know who to go for here. Because it's trying to drag you in, like, three different directions. You know, like, in those movies where someone steals from the Mexican cartel or something. And then they catch him and, you know, they're like... You have to choose. Either your mother dies or your wife dies. One must die. You choose. <laughs> you know? And he's like, I don't know who to... What? <laughs> and that's what the auto aim was going through. Or the aim assist, rather. That's what the aim assist was going through there. It didn't know who it wanted to, to choose. Got itself all caught up and held hostage by the amount of targets on screen. But yeah, anyway, back to that guy. And yeah, so no, no no, crazy finish to that, really. Um, just the police ended up coming, you know, standing next to him and being like, what are you doing? And then eventually they helped him put his clothes back on and then they escorted him out and that was it. You know, no, no crazy end to it. But as you can imagine, just very, very strange. Very strange situation. I think I probably got time for another quick one. There was another one, again, very, very long time ago, but again, same uh, train station. So I'm at the exit. And these four boys come up 
and they're all walking slowly together, talking like in what seems to be very in-depth conversation. So they come over to the wide barrier where you leave the station and all four of them are standing right in front of it in a circle and they're talking, they're very close and they're talking very low and they're all standing in front of the exit gate. And I'm letting it rock for about a minute. I don't care what you're doing in the train station. If you're hanging out, waiting for someone, talking, I don't care. As long as you're not in the way of an exit or an entrance, because then you're just like, why are you in? Why are you there? Of all places, why are you there? Stop being in awkward places. So I let it rock for about a minute. And then I, I got a little bit annoyed because I'm just standing there and I say, boys. I addressed all of them at once and said, boys. And they stopped all at the same time and they all looked over their shoulder and they all looked at me like I was interrupting something you know super important and I said are we in or are we out and then I pointed at the gate like to let them know you're standing in front of an exit by the way this ranked game had some heavy hitters in here you probably don't notice it because I'm just talking about some random story but we got some good players in this lobby we donked some aces on the head in this one you know if you know names when you're looking for the uh for the kill feed, you'll know. Some good players in here. Um, yeah. So I go, boys, are we in or are we out? So then they will look back at each other. And then they tap onto the gate. And the gate opens and all four of them walk through together. At this point, I thought they were friends. Because as soon as the gate closed and they was on the other side of the gate it wasn't even three or four seconds before all four boys started full-on swinging at each other like it was a boxing free-for-all two versus two these four guys were swinging for their heels and it was not like you're not like you know measured you know half jabs full-on haymakers trying to knock each other out completely out cold just absolute bombs being thrown and from like again like five seconds ago i'm looking at four mates who i think are mates just like talking and then are about to go but they're just taking too long now i'm standing there going what the fuck you know four guys are just fighting like it's mortal combat on the station and like it's two versus two one of them runs around the corner and I'm like, wow, we just left this boy. I was wrong. He was getting a run up. He came running back around the corner to do a jump kick. He missed though, but it was, it was, it was interesting to watch. So me and my colleague who was there also there at the time, we're just standing there just watching it like it's a movie because we, we don't, we're not allowed to get involved in stuff like that. We're not allowed to touch anybody. So the BTP were called and they were on their way and the fight got broken up because a police officer came running out, he came sprinting around the corner, going, hey! And then, as soon as they heard that, they all ran. And what basically turned out happening was, I found out after the uh, after the ordeal, was uh, two boys, two of the boys had apparently robbed the other two boys. And, you know, they was trying to say they didn't take anything from them, so there was like a disagreement. The two boys who apparently stole stuff, they said they didn't steal stuff. And the other two were like, no, you definitely took from us. And then as soon as they got on the outside, it went into a fight. And that's basically what happened. I don't know whatever happened after that, but that was uh, that was why that happened. So yeah, two short stories for you there from work. Again, not all of the stories are super long. Some of the funny ones are just really short ones, just really quick. Quick time events, <laughs> you know? Quick time events. <laughs> you see how I let that Deku get back up so I could get an extra KO. <laughs> sneaky but i am playing all for one so i have to be a little bit villainous you understand of course anyways there you have it two games hopefully you guys enjoyed the video um look at that karishima showing up for the loading screen there because it's that video from the first match love that used all might a bit in uh, this one as well but i didn't use all might enough to consider this match being an all might worthy video so that's why i just tacked it on here on the end anyways Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys are good. Hopefully you enjoyed the stories in this match. And hopefully you enjoyed the Karishima craziness in the first match. So don't forget to like, comment, sub, watch the small lads. And I'll see you on the next one.